In this video, you're gonna learn how to seamlessly change instruments in Ableton Live without any audio dropouts or hung notes. Hey everyone, I'm David from Sunday Sounds where we believe in making software like Ableton Live fun and easy to use for worship musicians. If you're using Ableton Live for your live keys sounds, then you're probably familiar with the problems we're going to address in today's video. While Ableton Live sounds great and is rock solid for live performance, it isn't intuitively designed for live keys preset management. There's all sorts of different ways you can access different sounds inside of the software. You can put your sounds on individual tracks and switch between them, or you can create stacks of instruments inside of your tracks, but there's problems with a lot of the common approaches with either notes getting cut off when you select a new sound, or with notes infinitely sustaining any time you change to a new preset. Uh, it's really unfortunate that there isn't an intuitive way to do this in Ableton Live because in every other way, Ableton Live is a really great platform for live keys preset management. But the good news is that there is a pretty straightforward, although somewhat complex method for achieving seamless preset switching inside of Ableton Live. And that's what I'm gonna teach you today. You're gonna to be able to select presets on the fly without automatically cutting off your audio and without having to worry about hung MIDI notes. Now this tutorial goes pretty in depth because this process is a little bit more complicated, but we'll go step by step and you'll be able to see my screen so you can follow along. And the good news is once you learn how to do this, you understand the principle, then it doesn't take that much time to replicate this process for any presets that you'd like to integrate into your Ableton Live rig. So let's get started. For this tutorial, I'm using Ableton Live 9 intro. You can do this in any version of Ableton that you have. So whichever version you're in, go ahead and open it up and get ready to follow along. So to get started, you can open up just the stock new set in Ableton Live. And we're gonna be working on a MIDI track for this tutorial. Gonna open up the browser over here on the left, click on instruments, and we're gonna grab a blank instrument rack as the first step. And then I'm gonna name this instrument rack preset selector. You can name this whatever makes the most sense to you. Just make sure it's something that you're gonna be able to easily remember. Now I'm gonna click the second option here so that I can drop instruments inside of this master preset selector instrument rack. So now I'm gonna to go to my user library and I'm gonna drag in a couple instrument racks that are already built. These are some of the free Ableton patches that we give away here at Sunday Sounds. So I'm gonna drag in this aggressive polysynth and this symphony pad. So right now here on this MIDI track, both of these sounds are gonna to respond to my playing. Sounds cool. If I wanted to mute one, I could just hit the mute button there. And I could go back to the other one. But this isn't really a great way to manage presets for live performance. So I'm gonna leave them both on. Now, before we get into how you're gonna do this preset switching, you wanna make sure that you change your monitor setting on the track to in. And then if you want, you can also designate your MIDI from to be your specific MIDI keyboard. Or if you are comfortable with the way that you have all of your MIDI ins and outs set up, you can designate that to be whatever you would like. But the important thing is that your monitor is set to in. This is so that even if the track isn't armed, sustain data and note off data is still gonna be passed through to the track. That just means that you're not gonna get any notes that aren't uh, ended when you let go of your sustain pedal. Don't get too hung up on that terminology. If you don't quite get what it means, don't worry about it. Just know that you wanna have your monitor set to in. Okay, so now we need to be able to seamlessly switch between these presets in real time without instantly silencing the previous preset. To do this, we're gonna use Chain Selector inside of Ableton Live. If you're not familiar with Chain Selector, don't worry about it. I'm gonna explain just enough for you to understand how this works as we go through the process. So here inside of our preset selector instrument rack, we've got our two instruments and they're both active. We can select one and see that instrument here on the right. We can select the other and view it as well. We're gonna click the chain button right here. 
Now, in chain selector, this, this is chain selector right here. This orange bar at the top represents the currently selected chain. And inside chain selector, you have 128 total steps or links in the chain. This blue bar right next to each of these instruments represents where that instrument is in the chain. So right now, both this aggressive polysynth and this symphony pad are both at step zero in chain selector. So when this orange bar is at zero, both sounds are gonna be active. So what we need to do is put each instrument on a separate link in the chain. So to do that, you're gonna click on the blue bar and drag the aggressive polysynth over to one. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the symphony pad. We're gonna step that over to two. Now chain selector, this orange bar, that's where the chain actually is at the moment. It's at zero. So now we're not gonna hear anything at all because there are no instruments on chain selector step zero. Now notice that this little yellow activity monitor here next to each of those instruments is still responding. That's because MIDI is still being passed through to those plugins. They're just not outputting any audio. They're not doing any other processing because Chain Selector has them deactivated. So now, if we wanted to, we could click this orange Chain Selector and move it to one. And we hear just the aggressive polysynth. We can click it over to two and hear just this pad. While I'm sustaining, I'm going to move Chain Selector back to one and you can hear that it's still sustaining. And now I can play this aggressive polysynth. Now I have both sounds going. As soon as I let go of my sustain pedal, then the symphony pad is gonna fade out. The aggressive polysynth is still going. So this gives you totally seamless, flexible preset switching all inside of Chain Selector. Now, obviously you don't wanna be dragging that little orange bar around during a live performance. So the last step of this process to make it accessible for you is gonna happen in Session View. We're gonna add some MIDI clips to automatically adjust the chain selector's position to call up different presets. So I'm gonna minimize the browser over here and I'm gonna double click an empty scene to add a MIDI clip. Now I'm gonna hit Command R on my keyboard to rename and I'm gonna name this off. This is what's going to turn off the sound because you need to be able to not just select presets but to also select no preset at all. Now, with this clip selected, we can see the clip view down here at the bottom of the screen. Now, don't get hung up on all of this stuff that you see here. There's actually three different views here in the clip view. You've got the launch area, the notes area, and the envelopes area. You don't need to worry about launch or notes, so you can go ahead and minimize those by clicking these little circles over here in the bottom left. All we need is the envelopes area. And since we were previously interacting with Chain Selector, it's likely that you're already gonna be selected here inside the Preset Selector Instrument Rack and Chain Selector. If you see something else, then you just wanna click on this top bar, and this lets you tell Ableton what instrument racks you wanna work within. Now remember, at the beginning of this tutorial, we named that top level instrument rack Preset Selector. And the reason we did that is so that we'd be able to really easily find that instrument rack later inside of this dropdown. So right here at the top, we see Preset Selector. And then inside of that, we just want to go down and choose Chain Selector. So now that we've got those two options, we can draw in the automation that we need to see. So what the MIDI clip will do when it's fired. So we're gonna click here to insert automation. And right now it's setting chain selector to one, but we want to set this off clip to zero so that when we fire this clip, it moves chain selector to zero and all of our other sounds are automatically bypassed. Now we're gonna do the same thing two more times. We're gonna rename this one aggressive synth, and we'll just name this one pad. Now I'm gonna click on this, and again in envelopes, preset selector, and chain selector. And I'm gonna to click to draw in my automation, and we want the aggressive synth to be chain selector one. And then for the last one, we're gonna to go to the pad. It's already inside chain selector because that's where we've been working. 
We're going to click to draw in automation and set the chain selector to two. Now I'm going to click down here at the bottom again so I can view the instruments. So watch what happens when I fire these clips. Watch specifically the chain selector area down here at the bottom where you can see that orange bar. So when I fire off, chain selector automatically jumps to zero. When I fire the aggressive synth clip, chain selector will jump to one. And when I fire this, it will jump to two. So this allows me to actually move the chain selector bar around in real time using MIDI clips instead of having to open this specific area of the instrument rack. So I can actually minimize this now and pull up these presets in real time. And then I can mute it. And it continues to sustain until I let go of the sustain pedal. And that's all there is to it. I know it's a little bit dense, a little bit more complicated than some of our other Ableton Live tutorials, but being able to seamlessly change presets in Ableton Live is really important if you wanna be able to handle transitions as a Worship Keys player. So if you wanted to duplicate this and make a really flexible preset switching rig for yourself, you could create a track, a single track with all of the chain selectors that you need and then duplicate that track multiple times. And then that would allow you to actually jump around in clips so you could layer the aggressive synth in the pad at the same time. You could do this with pianos, with organs, with any other types of sounds that you'd like and have seamless switching between all of them. And you can even move clips up or down to rearrange them and then fire master clips over here on the right side to pull up a whole bank of presets at a moment's notice. So a lot of folks like to set up their, uh, their horizontal rows to be an entire layered preset for a song. And then they just step through their master presets one at a time to pull up all the presets that they want seamlessly. Now, you may run into a couple of limitations here, especially if you're using Ableton Live Intro, because you have an eight scene limit per track in intro. If you have standard or suite, then you can use uh, as many scenes as you'd like, and you can run up to 128 different instruments inside of a single instance of Chain Selector. So you're gonna have all sorts of flexibility. Now, so you can see what this looks like implemented on a larger scale. I've opened up our Sunday Keys template for Ableton. We use this seamless preset switching method inside of Sunday Keys to make a lot of different awesome worship key sounds available with seamless preset switching. So we have some built-in presets ready to go that are all linked to the master scene. So we can pull up all these presets with just a single button press. switch to another one really easily. And then you can also drag these presets up or down to build presets of your own. The work of setting up Chain Selector is really time intensive. So if you're short on time, if you just wanna make sure that something is going to work for you, then Sunday Keys for Ableton not only does all the work of setting up seamless preset switching for you, it also gives you tons of awesome, ready to play, modern worship keys sounds that are really dialed in and don't require any third-party plugins, just Ableton Live. And Sunday Keys for Ableton even works in Ableton intro. If you're an Ableton Keys player, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. We're releasing new Ableton tutorials all the time. Thanks for watching.